Well, Merry Christmas and welcome home. My name is Rachel Billups. I'm the senior pastor here at Ginghamsburg Church, and I just want to say thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you for making Ginghamsburg the place that you've experienced Christmas Eve. Now, there's something mysterious, almost magical about Christmas Eve, and I'm not talking about Santa's trip down the chimney, right? I'm talking about when you walked into this room, there was this warmth. God's presence was here. God is present. God is with us. God's love is so tangible, you can like almost taste it along with the sweet treats in the lobby. Love is being exchanged. Love is being shared. Who knew that God would so powerfully show up in the little burg of Tip City, Ohio? (laughs) Well, maybe just maybe some ordinary folk some 2,000 years ago. Those infamous shepherds who were just watching their sheep at night, mostly silent nights, when all was dark and ominous and maybe just a little bit boring. Let's listen to the Christmas story from the book of Luke. There were these sheep herders camping in the neighborhood, and they had set a night watch over their sheep, and suddenly an angel of the Lord stood among them, and God's glory blazed around them, and they were terrified. The angel said, Don't be afraid. I'm here to announce a great and joyful event that's meant for everyone worldwide. A Savior has just been born in David's town, a Savior who is Messiah and Master. This is what you're looking for, a baby wrapped in a blanket, lying in a manger. And at once the angel was joined by a huge angelic choir singing God's praises, glory to God in the heavenly heights, peace to all men and women on earth who please him. And as the angel choir withdrew into heaven, the sheep herders talked it over. Let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. They left, running, and they found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in the manger. Seeing was believing. They told everyone they met about what the angels had said about this child, and all who heard the sheep herders were impressed. Now friends, why is it that the God of the universe would make such an important announcement deliberately share the love through ordinary folk like shepherds. I mean, these were third shift workers. And shepherds in the first century, well, they had a bad reputation. When it comes to the socioeconomic ladder, these these men were on the bottom. They're terribly ordinary. Why would God celebrate that the Savior of the world has come and make shepherds, the first witnesses to all of this. I mean, it seems absolutely unusual, or maybe just maybe God is saying something about the ordinary. Like these very ordinary shepherds are getting a front row seat to God's exceptional. As though God is leveling the playing field, making every valley come up and every mountain making it low. Perhaps love is best shared when the exceptional intersects with the ordinary. Now, we love the exceptional. The lights, the angel choirs, the heavenly skies bursting open and holiday celebration, we're all about that. But the ordinary, well, it almost leaves a bland taste in our mouths. No one wants to be ordinary, mundane, average, nope. We don't want any of that. We want exceptional. We want to be special. Brothers and sisters, do we even have a category for when the exceptional collides with the ordinary? Well, maybe... There are modern-day shepherds among us, men and women who work hard, who, who work those late-night shifts, and maybe instead of, like, moving sheep from here to there, maybe they move people from here to there. There are bus drivers. There are folks who work at the airport. There are taxi drivers. And when they're working those late nights, I can imagine they don't expect anything extraordinary to happen in their lives. Now, when I think of modern-day shepherds, I can't help but think of Uber drivers, right? God love Uber drivers. If you're an Uber driver, God bless you, because my goodness, you could tell so many stories about the habits of humans. What people say, what they do, what they leave in your car, no thank you, right? Just like those ancient shepherds, you have to put up with the habits of creatures that are frustrating and they leave, they, they leave you shaking your head. And any time of the day or night, you receive a call, get a text. You got to trust that GPS to get those humans from here to there, or at least when it works. Has anybody ever been with an Uber driver who doesn't know how to use their GPS? Oh, sweet Jesus, right? 
But for the most part, Uber drivers are modern day shepherds. They're amazing. A couple of months ago, I was in Orlando and I had just spoken at a conference and I needed a really quick ride to the airport and so I called an Uber. And friends, I was tired, I was cranky, I just wanted to get home. But as soon as I like pressed the app, the Uber driver was there in like seconds. I mean, Adolfo, my Uber driver, showed up in moments and he was like eager to help me. He took my bags, he gave me some water to drink, he was super chatty, and I thought, you know, we had a few little bit conversation and I thought that would be the end of it. But nope, Adolfo wanted to talk about so much more. He said to me, Rochelle, that's what he called me, Rochelle, what do you do? Now, brothers and sisters, this is where I got to be honest because I am in church. Usually I lie about this. It's just easier, right? I usually say something like, well, I'm in the people business. But I was too worn out to beat around the bush. And so I said, Adolfo, I'm a preacher. Now his eyes got really wide. And he smiled as though I had just made the best announcement the world has ever heard. He said, preacher, you are an answer to my prayers you can help me. Helping Adolfo was the last thing that I wanted to do. And yet, there I was in his car. Where was I going to go, right? I mean, I wasn't just going to get out. And so he had a listening ear. And so I listened to Adolfo's story. He grew up in New York City. In fact, he raised his family there before going to Orlando, And Adolfo was a faithful Roman Catholic. Faith really mattered to him. It mattered so much so that uh, he wanted me to listen to the Bible reading for the day. But not in English. In Spanish. Now friends, I know a little French, a little German, a little Hebrew, a little Greek. But the only Spanish I know I learned on Sesame Street. Uno, dos, tres. That's about it, right? And so I said one of those prayers that I say to God when I don't know what to do, sweet Jesus, help me, right? And I leaned in and I listened. And I recognized the story. It was the story of Zacchaeus, the story about how Jesus just welcomes him in. Actually, Jesus invites himself over to his house, right? And we talked about Jesus and generosity, what all this meant. And then he said to me, you know, Rachel, people are really busy. They're always rushing around. They don't have time in their life for God. What the world really needs is a group of people who are willing to give of themselves, not just take, take, take. I wish people knew that there was a God that could help. Now, brothers and sisters, my Uber driver was like preaching to me. We continue to talk about his family, about how his family was just like, like your family and my family. He had these adult kids that were struggling to find their way. Family members that were estranged from one another probably because they said things at their holiday parties that they weren't supposed to say, right? And also, family members that needed better employment. And then Adolfo says to me, Rachel, will you pray for my family? I mean, think about it. Female pastor, Roman Catholic Uber driver. He wants me to pray for him. And so I said to Adolfo, Adolfo, let's not wait. Let's pray right here, right now. You keep your eyes on the road and I'll pray. And so he drove and I prayed and I prayed for all the things that he asked me to pray for. And then I said, amen. And what happened next was extraordinary. Adolfo just let loose. He prayed the most passionate prayer that anyone has ever prayed over me. It was so passionate that I was really worried that he was closing his eyes, right? He prayed for me and my family. He prayed for Ginghamsburg Church. He prayed for this ministry. He prayed that someday that I would come back to Orlando and God would make our paths meet again so that we could have a whole nother conversation. Brothers and sisters, the presence of God was so thick I could almost taste it in that Toyota Highlander, right? Now, wait a second. I'm the preacher. I thought I was supposed to be sharing the love with Adolfo, but but my Uber driver was so beautifully sharing God's love with me. Isn't that how God's love works? 
Isn't love a two-way street? I mean, it's not just one way, it's a two-way street. Love is best shared when the exceptional intersects with the ordinary. And brothers and sisters, this shouldn't have surprised me, right? This is exactly what happened 2,000 years ago when God showed up in the lives of ordinary shepherds and suddenly they let loose. And they declared, let's go over to Bethlehem as fast as we can and see for ourselves what God has revealed to us. And they left running. Now let's pause right there. Adults in the first century, they don't run. Men in the first century do not run. It was considered undignified. But these guys, they don't care. The scripture tells us they left running and found Mary and Joseph and the baby lying in a manger, seeing was believing. They told everyone they met what the angels had said about this child, and all who heard the sheep herders were impressed. Seeing was believing for the shepherds. And with no regard for their reputation, they tell every single person they encounter about this child. They let loose. Friend, I wonder, have you ever let loose on someone? I mean, I'm not talking about getting angry. Not some water cooler conversation at work. Heated debate in the boardroom. No, no, no. Have you ever let loose, showered another human being with the love of God. Because if third shift shepherds and Uber drivers in Orlando can let loose with the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, what's holding us back? Why aren't we showering the people around us with God's love? Is it because letting loose sounds like losing control? I mean, did I just say that, right? Like it's God's unbridled love kind of thrown out everywhere? Are we afraid? Because love is a two-way street. Not only do we share the love, but that's how we also receive the love as well. When we're sharing it, we're open to receiving it. Gingham's work family, we're not just called to share, share our resources, share our love, share the love of Christ. We're also called to receive it. God's announcement made 2,000 years ago is still the the same announcement tonight. God is here. God is present. God is with us. The word, Jesus, became flesh and blood and moved into our neighborhood, and that changed everything. Friends, are you willing to be changed by the love of God? We love because God first loved us. We give because God first gave to us. And so I wonder... Have you ever really fully received the love of God? Have you ever had a holy encounter with Jesus Christ? For a moment, I just want you to close your eyes. And I want you to think about what you do every day, the ordinary stuff that you do. For some of you, that means uh, teaching children how to read. For others of you, you're taking the late night shift at the hospital. Some of you are Uber drivers. (laughs) Some of you are leading those conversations in boardrooms. There are others of you who spend all of your time volunteering, still others who are raising your children. Whatever it is, what do you do day in and day out? Imagine yourself there. And then I want you to imagine that an angel of the Lord, a messenger, comes to you and says, Do not be afraid. God wants to give you a gift. And that gift is going to change everything. Can you see it? Can you see him? Can you see Jesus? Because, friend, Jesus is the gift that God so desperately wants to give us. So what do you do with him? Do you adore him or do you ignore him? Adore or ignore because the church choice is yours. I mean, it could be pretty easy for us to walk away from this experience and say, oh, the music was amazing. Wasn't that great? And that'd be the end of it. But what if? What if in all of our ordinariness, we opened ourselves up to receive God's exceptional, 
unconditional, unmerited love. Maybe for some of you, it's the first time you ever even fathomed receiving God's love. But for some of you, you've forgotten this is what Christmas Eve is all about. Receiving the love of God. And so, just take a moment and put your hands on your lap. Palms facing up as a sign that you're ready to receive. And if you're ready to receive the love of God, let me just pray this prayer over you. Lord Jesus, we are ordinary. In fact, most of the time, we're pretty much a hot, holy mess. Yet God, that's why you came from heaven to earth. You came for us, and not just for us, but to set all of creation right. Lord Jesus, we need your exceptional We need your unconditional love. Visit us in the same way that you visited those shepherds so long ago. Jesus, we open ourselves up to you. Help us to receive your love. Jesus, we want you to be Lord of our life. We pray this And we claim this in Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. Friends, now that we've received the love of God, we can't hoard it to ourselves. We gotta share the love. Share the love and light of Christ with everybody we encounter. In John chapter one, verse five, it says, the light shone in the darkness. And the darkness, well, it didn't overcome it. Jesus Christ is the light of the world and death and darkness cannot overcome that light. Nothing, not one thing can overcome the light of Jesus Christ. There is victory in Jesus. And brothers and sisters, that's a reason to celebrate. That's why we're here. We believe that there is victory not only for individuals, but for the entire creation. Jesus Christ is our light and our love. In a moment, the ushers are gonna come forward and and you're gonna receive the light of Christ and then you're gonna share it with your neighbor. Now, I wanna remind you that the lit candle always remains upright. We don't want anybody getting burned today, right? Friend, God loves you. The God of the universe loves you. And so freely, freely share that love.
I love this time of the year because uh, it seems like God's blessings are at the surface. They come to our mind and our heart so clearly. And so it's been tradition throughout the years at this moment that we pause and allow everyone just to shout out, maybe in one word, uh, shout out the blessings, the things you're thankful for in life. Grandchildren. Grandchildren. Health. Family. Family engagement, did you say? Congratulations. My doctors. Your Amen. doctors. Amen. I heard healing. Ginghamsburg. Hope. Are there any others? Amen. Woo-hoo! Amen. Friends, it's been absolutely beautiful to spend this Christmas Eve celebration with you. And as we uh, look forward to 2020, I want to encourage you to come back and join us as we break busy together. Pastor John and I, we love you. God loves you. Now go and share that love. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas.